Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys board gaming podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And... I hope you re- re- recall all of our voices from that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They are not at all. We're all we're, it's very distinct. Yeah. It's the three white guys. It's really hard to get those all uh, mm-hmm. mixed together. Three I've white... had multiple times where someone was talking to me about a game that I was playing and I was like, no, Zach was actually the person playing that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zach was the one that was talking. Yeah. Um, you know, medium, deep voices, a little, little bit of bass there. Yeah. Um, All right. So I think what we need to do is I need to, I need, I need to go a little bit darker, dar- uh, down more. Adrian, you need to go way up. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable I am with this. There you go. <laughs> I don't, Just, I don't know how long I can do this. <laughs> See, now they don't know which high pitch. Yeah, wait, wait to fuck it all up. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll just all talk like this, <laughs> and then next week we'll all talk really low, really low. Oh boy, oh baby, <laughs> oh Billy. <laughs> so, what are we, Adrian? We are a board gaming podcast. <laughs> I'm sure everybody already knew that. But. Yes, yes, I'm sure they did. Uh, as such, let's talk about board games. Uh, I guess I've, I've been playing the most, so I'll go in the middle. Unless you guys did your normal thing of only playing the same games. Uh, we <laughs> did play the same game, but not with each other. Okay. And, no, then, and then we played the same game. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So how about you guys go then? Uh, and then I will just go for a long, long time. All right. Jeff, go ahead. We're just going to start with Stockpile, which we had two separate games yes. that we were playing at the same time. I played with uh, Kaiser and Manny and uh, Matt. Probably my copy. Uh, Poss- possibly. Yes. Yes. Um, we had the dice. We had the uh, personal player powers, your standard. The fancy side of the board with the different... Um, <clears throat> I, I showed up right as it was getting set up and explained. So, uh, as I've played it many times, I was able to just jump right in. I took, uh, the, uh, the dude that could move things up one or one uh, up or down. Crazy Kramer. Crazy Kramer. We had. It's a good one to have. It is. Yeah, it is. Uh, we had, uh, the Donald who, uh. Good old Discount Donald. Discount Donald. He pays less. Yep. Yeah, he pays one tier less than his yes. bid. We had, uh, the one that could block above. Carl, the, uh, cra- Cunning Carlos? Yeah. So the yep. auction was blocked one above. And then there was someone that had their own special, like, auction thing that it started, like, in, in the Bud- negatives. Budget yeah. Barbara. Yeah. yeah. And then it went really high if you ended up at the top. Just, just to let you know, I played three player of that game with Tom Photos and um, Sean, and we played with three out of those four people. <laughs> Which one was missing? Carlos. Okay. okay. No, no, no. Sorry. No, we didn't have. Who was the first one you said? Uh, the up and down Kramer. Kramer didn't have him. Okay. Had okay. Maverick Mark. Oh. Gotcha. That you could take one card and move it to another pile, Ooh. which. Um, and three player is very powerful. Yes, in the I can beginning. see how that would be. <laughs> What's the one where you can sell your first stock always for like eight k or something? I don't know, but I think that's a uh, a newer one. Gotcha. I think that was the one that someone played with instead of something else. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, remember. so take out one of those three yeah, that, just, that Jeff fi- mentioned. Yeah, it's just, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but that was really powerful during the game because they would sell bullshit stocks that they only had one of and be like, I'm getting a bunch of fucking money for this. Yep. Uh, I won a th- location auction and then it immediately crashed and then I had one stock oh, no. and out of the three that I had- and then that was about it for me for the game. Um, <laughs> Did you go all in on to a, 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 to no, a spot? No, oh, okay. I think I may have even gotten it for free. Oh, okay. But but, um, but yeah, I I think I, <laughs> I held, like, at most at any one time, I had, like, four stocks yeah. or something like that. Some of them were split, but then all of my stocks that I had were, like, pretty hard about to crash, or I knew they were about to crash, and I had to sell them off. And oh. it was it was not ideal. I uh, I think I ended with a 108 
the end of that game. And I, I think still got into six figs. There was <laughs> there was there was people that had like quadruple my score in that game. <laughs> so I think Manny got the win. Uh, Matt and Kaiser were pretty close. Were you playing with Bonds? We were not playing with Bonds. No okay. one. I think both Matt and Manny had not played before. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so I've, two you, new players. Uh, I always feel comfortable with the uh, special industry side of the board versus the, you know, the the generic one. Yeah, the expert side. And with they the investors, it. and with the dice, and with bonds. Like I always feel comfortable playing with all of those. Yeah, I usually play with bonds. I could see with two new players leaving them out because it's really easy for them to underestimate the value of that stable, constant trickle of money. Yeah. Um. But okay. Yeah. yeah. How'd your game go, Jeff? Uh, Zach? Uh, it went. I would like, once again. I was Maverick Mark, so it went swimmingly. Yeah. Um, I was so budget Barbara, and <laughs> budget Barbara and discount Donald. They both start with twelve and or fifteen thousand and twelve thousand respectively. Maverick Mark starts with twenty five. So I can always buy the first one, no matter what. Like I, and especially with uh Barbara. 15 is the same on both of the tracks, but then it goes higher and then it goes to like 22 instead of 20. Uh, so I knew that if I bid 15 on it and I was the first person, like I was first player, I think. No, I was second player. Um, no, I was sorry. I was first player um, that I could just put it on. Like I, I was able to use my ability to <laughs> take one of the other. And I think I had like five stocks in one row. And then I just knew I'm going to be able to buy that. So I bought it. Um, you know, like I, obviously, you know, when you when you just buy out auction things, it costs more to do it. So you just got to make sure it's worthwhile. But I had, unlike Jeff, what you said, what, like four stocks you said throughout the game? You just had oh, like four yeah. and most you I, had at I, one time. Yeah, yeah, I did not have many, four or five at most. I want to say I had six or seven split. And then I also had six or seven regular ones too. And I had stuff crash throughout the game too. But uh, Tom Photos made the mistake of selling cosmic computers early. He had like two two of them, and he sold it early. Always shot up. I ended up getting like forty or fifty thousand just from splits, and you know, splitting splits that gets you ten thousand each, and mm-hmm. it just kept getting up. It was very funny to watch him just bitch about every time it came up. <laughs> sure, um, it I- is it is interesting to see with three players how much unknown information there is for everybody because obviously there's five that are like face down but the fact that there's two out two more out there that nobody knows well, it was always just like you see people selling it and then like you see that flip over and you're like well why the fuck were you selling it and they're like i don't know <laughs> you're yeah. like god damn it <laughs> um i ended up i come i won comfortably um i think i had 275,000 next person was like 100 and or no, it was like two. They were at two hundred, and then um, third place was one thousand more than you. I think they had what? Could, uh, we came over afterwards. Oh, and was it Tom Photos? I think who had like oh yes, or or I I I had beat him by a thousand. Yes, I think. yes, yeah. So he was dead last, dead last between yeah. both games. Yeah, and I Classic was barely Tom not. Tom Photos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still love that game. Yeah, stockpile's great. Mm-hmm. I do want to try some... to be printed again, <laughs> probably, <laughs> or not. whatever they said was happening with that game. Yeah, uh, I still want to play with more of the like the new expansion things, the like strategy cards that are like one time use things you have to ba- b- purchase, or using the uh, bidding for first place. You throw like a card get that card gets thrown in there. Like there's there's several things in there I do want to try at some point. I just I'm always. I'm always teaching new people, just like you know, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. So it's always like, uh, well, I'm going to do the 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 most basic of that things. we can. Sure. So I think I saw someone playing on the regular board once, and I was like, "What are you <laughs> fools yeah. doing?" No, was it an old version before they even had the alternate side of the board? I I, I think, think so. I had like I think I bought it like the first time it came out, and it was still on. Hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't I know. Is there an old version that only has one side of the board? I don't know. I was I speculating. Uh-huh. Rant, like I was trying to give them an excuse why they might be doing that. No, I think they were just dumb. There was somebody uh, who, whose name I will redact for not mocking them on the podcast in case they listen. But they were talking about how like 
they could see playing without the dice because it might be too overwhelming for new players. And I was like, no, you're dumb. I will never play without the dice yeah. ever. This is someone I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. But yeah, he was like, he was going on about like, oh no, like I, I think it plays just fine without the dice. And I was like, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Please go away from me. Yeah. Cause the base Why game, it's just, with you? the base game is just six cards. It's uh, like four, like three up, two down, and then one double split. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you heard that, Wes, since you're commenting there in chat. Like, But yeah, you basically, you have the six cards for the companies, and then you have six static cards, and it's like a plus four, a plus two, a plus one, a stock split, but like, and I think it's a double split, and then it's it like is. a down two. Yeah. And like, that's it. Mm-hmm. So like, five out of the six things no, are no, it's, always it's, going It's up. four. It's like four, three going up, one split, and then two going down. But oh, that's I right. I think it's one and two or something. Like, I don't yeah. know. But either way, it's as soon as the dice were introduced, I was like, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. That extra yeah. like swinginess makes it way, yeah. way better. Yeah. Um, Mainly because it's you roll it and then you make plans, right? It's yeah. It doesn't... Yeah. You so, make your decisions based off of it versus yeah. it influencing your decisions. That would be fucked if you're like, do you want to sell this? You don't know where it's going to go. That would oh. be that would be like uh, playing it, originally how we did where we sold after uh, the, everything the, moved. Everything moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's like, well, this is that. dumb. Why would we yeah. ever do? That? Yeah, um, yeah. So that uh, that's uh, that's stockpile. That's stockpile. What else did you guys play? Uh, and then we played Scout, the Oink game. I don't know, almost one Spiel DR or whatever uh, card game about recruiting circus people into your traveling circus. Yes. I I just want to let you know that I was already going into this game against it. Oh. Because when you play, when you go from four, four players to five, when you go from five players to four players, there's only one card you don't play with. And each of the cards has like a name, and that's like the person you're whatever. It's fucking Zachary. Yep. I felt, I felt <laughs> attacked. Slided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not good enough for so your circus. The only, is that how it is? The only, <laughs> the only theme in right. this game is the names of the actions and the like, the uh, the names on the cards, and also the act that those people perform. Yes. The game has nothing to do with the act or the name in any way, shape, or form. Nope. Uh, so it's really just the names of the actions, which are scout and search, seek, seek and scout. What was that? What was? F- don't, don't worry remember. about the theme. Don't. Worry. Yeah. No, there is none. And oh, and the and the the uh, art looks like sort of the. There's the thing that you get to do both actions. It looks like a little car. Yeah. And yes. then all of the cards backs are victory point money things. And then also the tokens are that same art. The game was very expensive for what it was. You said it was like 24 bucks or something? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty twenty four dollars uh, for basically a deck of cards. No, I think I think uh oink games tend to be around. Yeah, that much. I mean it was all pre punched. Uh, and then all the victory points are come in like every denomination and they're double sided for positive or negative. Yep. So anyways, you deal out cards that those cards that you are dealt have to stay in that same order. Bonanza style. Yep. And then you can flip them either way. They're double sided in terms yeah. of numbers, so top you can and bottom. S- you have basically an A or B option of what you want to start with. And it's not like switching each card A or B. It's. The whole hand. All A or all B. So, Uh, And you're trying to get runs or sets. And it can be runs in up or down. And then... But they have to be next. They have to be next to each other in the cards. Yes. And so really you just sort of like play out hands that can be like one, two. And then someone can beat that with a pair or a one, two, three. Or anything better than that. Yeah, or even like a higher, like a two, three would be to one, two. Yes. But it, but uh, pairs or three of a kind, four of a kind always beat their equivalent runs. Yep. So like three of a kind would beat any three card run. Yep. But you can't, but you have to play them out of your hand as they lie. So you're looking to have like a good starting hand that you have at least maybe two or three cards you can play at once. 
someone played, but the last round was real fast. It was. Because <laughs> someone got like five. And it was oh, like, geez. well, so a round ends as soon as someone doesn't have any cards in their hand. Doesn't matter player order. Or the three people after that person that played the hand just scout, which is taking a card off of either end of their set that they have down in front of them and giving them a point for doing that. But it yeah. does reduce their... So if they had like three nines, you take one of their nines, now it's just two nines. Yeah, so you can play a one, two, th three, or you could play a run of three cards and beat that. Yeah, and it's basically if everyone else scouts, because if you play a yeah. different player, it counts mm -hmm. different amounts of people. Yes. But, yes. but if someone plays some god hand... Like and then, seven. Yeah, is close to it. And then every person after you scouts... Rounds over, you win. Yeah. yeah. there. Uh, so normally you said it's search or scout. That You have a token that lets you do both. Yes. In which case it lets you grab a card from their pile and then put when it you, in. When you grab a card from their pile, it can go into your hand either way up wherever in your hand you want. So that really helps you. I thought it was only still only on the ends of your hand. You can only pull from the ends of theirs. But as far as I'm aware, that can go into we your hand. We were taught. That it could go anywhere. Yes. Uh, that would be a very different game if it could just it, go anywhere. And that would be very hard. Yeah. There's only there's only one way to know, and it's to look at the rules. Anyways, mm -hmm. scouting, grabbing a card, putting it into your hand, then... Giving the person you scouted from a point. Yep. Yep. And then continuing on as people just play, but um, if you beat someone's hand they have down in front of them you get that hand as points to you so you would want to beat it with as many cards that are in their hand as possible because then you get a bunch of points yep uh from that uh and then you play as many rounds as there are players uh and at the end of the round two uh you count how many cards you have left in your hand those if are you negative weren't the, yeah they're negative if you're not the person that ended the round uh, so a lot of times it'd be like, oh, I got seven points, but I have five cards in my hand, so I only actually got two points that round. And we were actually doing, I'm not going to say, like, Kaiser was already going to win by the third, by the end of the third round. That wasn't in, content mm -hmm. in contention. Yes. But everybody else was doing fairly well. Yeah. Uh, and then, like you said, that last round. Mike Jones plays like five cards or something like that. And well, no, so a third, uh, Kaiser is the one that ended it. Oh, okay. It was that it was that real early Mike Jones played his search and uh, Sir, yes, his search and scout, then. his search and scout. And then when it came around when he played those big cards, he couldn't do that and he didn't have the cards in his hand to beat it. Yeah, so uh, it just ended prematurely early and then we lost all of our points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, our all of our points disappeared. You ended up in negative points. Yeah, I was like negative two or something like I that. I went from 16 to like five or something. Yeah. Um, it did not go well. It did not. Oh, it went well for Kaiser. That's about it. You guys are correct. Okay. Yes. They can go anywhere. Yes. Yeah. But it's fun. I liked it. Yes, it is fun. I also liked it. It does not have the bullshit of trick-taking games, but has sort of a genre-esque of yes. trick-taking. I have played it before, uh, and I really like it as well. I think it's solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, Andrew talked about when I was hanging out with him on Friday, he was talking about how he did very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> or Saturday. It was Saturday I hung out with him. But yeah, he, he was talking about how he did very, very, very well. So and That's it for all the games I played. Right on. Anything else for you, Zach? Nah. Okay. Uh, for myself, I've played uh, a bunch of different games, apparently. So uh, starting at game night on Wednesday, uh, we played a five-player game of Root. So Megan uh, wanted to play a bigger game uh, that she knew. And uh, after humming and hawing over like, our collection for a while, I was like, well, does Root fall into this like area? And she was like, eh, I guess. Because she's not always been the biggest fan of Root. Um, so we played Root. Uh, it was me and Megan, uh, our friends uh, Casey and Sam, um, and then... Uh, Your co-worker, right? And then my co-worker, CJ. Uh, and so it was... Um, I was the Woodland Alliance, because I'm determined to win a game as Woodland Alliance. Uh, I still have not. Spoiler alert. Um, did they successfully I know at one point I commented that you always got to make sure you keep 
you just smack the uh, Woodland Alliance down. Nope, they never needed to. Okay. I was I was incompetent. Um, <laughs> You're already doing that to yourself. Yeah. Gotcha. Megan was the underground duchy, the mole people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gave Sam the lizard cult. Um, Casey was the Irie, and CJ was the vagabond. Uh, the Irie got off to a very powerful start uh, and looked to be running away with it without ever turmoiling until we finally... Uh, the mole people built up a large enough army that they were able to take two roosts and cause the uh, turmoil. Uh-huh. So they fell back. So so as per m- most of the games I've played as there, because they're my favorite out of the ones, is that they do great until they don't, they don't and then they just collapse. Yep. <laughs> um, then the lizard cult was doing surprisingly well. No one really ever interfered with their plans too much. Uh, the duchy was just getting rolling, uh, and I finally got into a position... Where so the did you have a um single guy I forget what they're called uh an officer no the little the faction that's one dude running around yeah the vagabond that vagabond. was CJ's okay. character all right so CJ was should have been giving me more cards and he wasn't and he finally because <laughs> he, he was like I need you to get to ten points so I can ally with you and then all I'll do is feed you cards and we'll win easy. And I was sitting at like seven points. He was like, now nah, you're taking too long. I'm going to just do shit myself. <laughs> and he played a bunch of quests and scored a bunch of points. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, that's too bad because like then the Irie, that, I think that was like the turn the Irie turmoiled. Uh, if not, it was like the turn immediately after when they only mm-hmm. had like two actions. And I was like, well, you should have waited for me, CJ, because on my turn now, I'm going to revolt in this lizard cult clearing and get rid of two gardens and a bunch of shit. And I'm going to revolt in this duchy uh clearing and get rid of like two of their buildings and another and like their their underground token so i scored like a bunch of points rocketed way up there um and then unfortunately uh it was too little too late basically all i probably did was keep anyone but the vagabond from winning so the vagabond ended up winning uh it was really pretty close the the duchy didn't recover. When, Duchy falls way behind if they get stomped like when that. When I toured around, it looked like the Vagabond was pr- like 28, 29. Yeah. 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 So like he made, he went from like 12 to like 28 in like one massive turn. And then he just, he they they can, took it to the yeah. next turn. And it was like, and that was one of those where it was like, okay, well, is there any way we can stop him? And it's like, no, unless we can deal 13 damage collectively over like before his turn to damage every one of his items, then no. And there's no real incentive to attack the Vagabond most of the time other than to keep them from winning. Yeah. Like, there's incentive to attack a lot of other people because, like, if you destroy their their cardboard pieces, Usually you get, get points. Yeah. You get no points for doing anything with the Vagabond, really, like, attacking them. Um, so it was um, rude, uh, Zach. Uh, and also, thank you, Modest Karma, for subscribing. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Um Anyway, um, yeah, so I continue to not win uh, as the um, Woodland Alliance. I want to say the last, like, three or four times I had played, the Vagabond ended up winning yeah, because back- of that same thing of, like, I, I'm. it's more... They're harmless. They're why, harmless why until they're even, unstoppable. And it's like, oh, you're fucking destroying yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, and you're about to win, and it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I got second to last. Megan got last with Dutchie. Um, but we were all, I want to say we were all over 15 points. All okay. the non-winners were doing okay. We were doing okay. <laughs> it was, a, well, and even the, even at the final scoring, the, the uh, Vagabond won, but they didn't win by like a dramatic amount. Like there were a couple other people who were probably within a turn of making a big push. Like even me as the Wooden Alliance, if I'd have had one more turn, I might've been able to get to the 30. Um, it just, nobody else did. Um, after that, we played some four-player um, uh, werewords, which was interesting. Um, you know, like you have the mayor uh, who knows the word, uh, and then you have maybe a seer, could be the mayor, so maybe no one knows the word on the good guys team, uh, and then two villagers and a werewolf. Um, we played three hands that way. We were going to play four, but then I had to go move a bunch of games over to Ant's car. So, so you could have one, you, you could have it where everybody except for one person doesn't know the word. Correct. Or knows the word. Yes. Um, I, uh, at least once, um, I think it was with Megan, she was the mayor werewolf, mm-hmm. and it was an immediate, like, no, you're the fucking werewolf. Like, no. Um, I was the mayor seer, and we won, and they hung, and the werewolves picked somebody else as the seer. I did a good job there. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then the other one, I think we lost on time and then did not find the werewolf. Casey did a very good job werewolfing on one of them. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Um, it definitely plays better with more, so especially when you can start adding like two werewolves and then like having the seer and then mm-hmm. like an apprentice. So there's somebody on the good team. The thing is a great one yeah. to be able to work in. I, I somebody told me a, a couple times where they played with just three people. And so in that case, it's just the werewolf, a villager, and a seer, and the mayor is one of could, them. Could you just play win, lose, banana instead? I mean, it's basically that because <laughs> it's just you could have it where everybody knows what the word is, uh, and then all, it's yes, all the players know the word, and then it's just about figuring out who the werewolf is, or if you're the werewolf, who the seer is, and so then yeah, it it se- it sounded like it was an interesting I way to think... to play. Yeah, because the deluxe technically is two to ten. Yeah, yeah. Werewolf. <laughs> yes. I couldn't Im- even, two player, two player. I couldn't huh? imagine playing two player. Yeah, I don't. At that point, I, you're just pro- playing twenty questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, it might just be. <laughs> it might literally just be twenty questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the mayor and the it's the mayor and the seer. <laughs> you just get get the word on the first yeah. question every time. <laughs> so, one seer, one werewolf. Yeah. Just nah, all right. No one knows. Yeah. No one picks the word. <laughs> just in purgatory. Um. But yeah, uh, I do still like werewords. It was it was nice mm-hmm. getting to play. Uh, would have liked to play with more people, but whatever. Uh, on Saturday, I went over after like four hours of sleep. Like I got basically no sleep. Uh, because I was coming off night shifts. Um. So like I got home Saturday morning. Uh, watch Last of Us, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Um, I am officially caught up with everything. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Um, then I took like a three to four hour power nap uh, and then went over to Eric's house where uh, me, Eric, MJ, and Andrew uh, played uh, Great Zimbabwe to start. Ooh. Um, the better founders of Gloomhaven. Yes. We were... Um, the game that replaced... Founders of Blue Maven. <laughs> I don't think that's quite how it was phrased, I, but I, let's go to the tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was uh, yeah. So we so we weren't sure what we were going to play until we got there. Uh, like I had taken Panamax, and there was some hemming and hawing, and then we ended up settling on Zimbabwe. Uh, so we set up and we started playing Zimbabwe. Um, and uh, it continues to be a really good game. Um. That game involved uh, Eric very early on being like, oh, yeah, I'm in last place. So, sure, you should definitely pick on me. Uh, and then, like, two turns after that, he won. Um, so, Mike Jones was like, yeah, I, I think you, Eric might be the only person who I feel less sorry for when he complains about being then picked then, yeah. on than me. <laughs> uh-huh. So, yeah, he won very, very dramatically. Uh, at the start of the game, Mike Jones was like, okay, I have played Great Zimbabwe with all of you, and I've logged my place. He's like, so I can tell you, that based on my plays, your highest scores playing with me, Adrian, negative five. Uh, <laughs> Andrew was like zero, and Eric was like two or something like that. Uh, I got a negative like 12. Um, <laughs> nice. It might have been even mo- more because you what start it- like so on that one, you start at zero, and then you start with your like goal at like 20. Yeah. Um, and then depending on what things you buy, what like powers and things you get, your it, it reduces, victory requirement yeah. goes up. There is one that reduces it, but. It it's like this literally does nothing but reduce your ability. <laughs> um, so Andrew ended up he would have been better off if he had done nothing the entire game. He ended up minus twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, boy! I, I think I think I got to like seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, something like that. I'm sure Mike Jones is is here in the chat. I'm sure he can. Uh, clarify where i ended but i did at least make some progress towards my points uh and then uh mike jones was in a uh relatively close second he he had been my previous i thought he was the one i was worried about winning uh because he was taking just an incredible amount of advantage of both myself and andrew until eric took even more advantage of myself yeah minus 22 minus 18 minus 8 and then zero eric won with an exact zero score nice so um, there you go. Uh, what is your favorite splatter? My favorite splatter is still probably Indonesia. Okay. Uh, Zimbabwe is really probably a close second at this point. For a long time, Food Chain was. Um, the starting meta 
for food chain uh-huh. uh turns me off a little bit and then i personally don't care to play food chain often enough to get good enough mm-hmm. to like compete with people who play it very often I feel like some of those other ones. Do you, you feel can like do you could play it with new people, or do you think you yes. still okay? All right. The problem there is that you've got to play with people who like the the sweet spot for me for Zimbabwe. You want you want Fu people Chain. who's like played it once or twice. Yes, okay. to where I don't have to tell them. Okay, you only have two viable choices at uh-huh. the start, or you will lose. Um, you know, but yeah, not somebody who's played it enough that they know like really more in depth strategy. Like I want it to be actually interesting. Gotcha. Um, well, that's the wrong game. Yeah, and that's one of the things I like about <laughs> Indonesia is that at any time, like someone can just throw a wrench in the works by calling a weird merger. That is or, very like, true. Doing yes. things like that. Yeah. So that's something I really like about yeah. Indonesia. Um, I still want to play Antiquity, uh, and then I think we have a date scheduled to play Horse. Horseless Carriage. Um, I, I watched the um, Shut Up and Sit Down review of it, and that's 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 a game all right yeah <laughs> um I, I like i watched like the first half i was like oh maybe it might be worth trying out and then after the second house i was like no i'm good i'm yeah uh i'm intrigued I, inevitably it's gonna be one of those things where i'm gonna end up i'm really hoping that paul doesn't like it enough that he doesn't want chris evans second copy so that if i do like it i can get chris evans second copy um I, i'll just say this don't fucking but like nudge the table or like accidentally knock because look oh that thing is like the fidge fiddiest fi- fidgety, fiddliest fiddliest thank you game i've one of if not the fiddliest yeah. game i've ever seen uh, i really want to learn antiquity but i think antiquity falls in that same vein of like don't fucking sneeze or you lose the entire game state mm-hmm. <laughs> um apparently heavy cardboard just a live stream of great zimbabwe a mere two months ago okay yeah. Apparently they had a fire in their studio or something. <laughs> Jeez. Oh dear. I hadn't yeah. heard about that. I hadn't either. I was just I just had clicked on it and I was like, that's weird that they're doing this. And they're like, hey, we haven't done a game in a while. Let's do this. And they did a full teach and we like Okay. I guess there was sickness and a fire in the studio. I feel like I had played Zimbabwe on a heavy cardboard stream way back in the day. Maybe they're slowly replacing me. I mean, you were long long since replaced. Yeah. But. Um anyway. After that, so that went that the Zimbabwe ended up going significantly faster than I think any of us were planning on a spotter going. Uh, thanks, Eric. Um, so then we decided to play something else, and Andrew was like, "Well, after bus is a spotter, right? Bus is a spotter, okay. yes. Right. Uh, With a non-spotter re-release, yes, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, Andrew was like, okay, well, after after that performance in Zimbabwe, I would l- I would personally like to play a cooperative game. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so we dug around for a bit uh, and ended up settling on Dead of Winter. Um, oh, co- I hope that he was the hidden traitor in that. So we played fully cooperative. <laughs> okay. So we didn't play with any secrets. <laughs> that would have been very funny. <laughs> uh, any secret objectives. Yeah, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence about donating Why this to the raffle. Why are you taking so much gasoline and boarding everything up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just a thirsty individual. I don't know what to tell you. Mike Jones, because uh, we initially were like, you know, cooperative. Okay, you just take out the betrayer ones, and everybody can still have their own secret objective, but you still need the group to win. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we looked further in the rules. was like, no, the cooperative one, you just take outside objectives entirely. Um, and so Mike Jones is like, oh, but I really wanted to be the pyromaniac and like the burn it all down. Like you need to have like four barricades and a bunch of gas. <laughs> this isn't yeah. mansions of madness, sir. You don't need to be pyromaniac yeah. in everything. Um, so, uh, so there, there was, uh, early on in the game, uh, we'd gotten a couple of the new survivor cards. So we had like seven or eight helpless survivors in the colony. Uh, and we came up with a crossroads card that was like, Hey, do we want to kill all of these people? <laughs> nice. uh, and, uh, we ended up killing them all. It was like, it was a three way vote. Eric wasn't in the colony, so he didn't get a vote. So me, Mike Jones and Andrew were voting on whether or not to kill all of them. And it was basically like. Uh, you can keep them um, and nothing happens. Or if you kill them, you remove all of the helpless survivors from the colony, uh, but you set your morale to like one, I think, like basically almost losing, almost losing. Uh, and so we were talking about like it happened like turn one almost. It was like, OK, this gives us a chance to like that's a dramatic amount of food we won't need over the course of the game. Mm-hmm. Like, And we ended up doing it. Um, it was myself and Mike Jones who voted yes. Andrew voted no. Uh, so we never really had a food problem, except for the fact that then our crisis cards that keep flipping over that you have to contribute cards to kept being food related. 
See, and, I hope every time you're like, see, this is why we killed them. This is why we killed them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if we hadn't killed them, we definitely would have lost yeah. uh, a starvation. Well, it's hard to say because we probably could have failed some more of those food crises and let our um, morale, drop. morale drop that way. So it's hard to say exactly. Um, yeah, and then I, almost immediately uh, I came across a horse and it was like, if you keep it, you you have to pay one extra food per turn. Uh, but the person with the horse can travel without rolling for exposure. Um, or you can kill the horse and get three food. And so we killed the horse and got three food. So we killed all the people who needed food and then we got, nice. you know, scrawny horse food. And you made some Ikea meatballs. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did you eat Ikea meatballs when you were there? I did not, know. Oh, okay. Um, we ended up, um... I'm just wondering if you had eaten horse food. No. <laughs> I have I, I, It's been a while since I've had Ikea food, yeah. Um... I've actually eaten real horse, not jokingly saying that Ikea meatballs are made from horse. Mm. Um, well, I mean, it's not a joke. It just happened a long time ago. Not They are not currently made out of horse. <laughs> so it I was, didn't know they were ever it was actually a where there was, they were yeah, using was horse a, food. There was a thing. Of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. Horse yeah. meat. Yeah. I don't think Ikea knew, but their supplier yes. was fucking them over. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, Anyways. Horse. Anyways. You, you ate the horse. I have eaten a horse, and then we ate a horse in the game. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we ended up calling the game, uh, it with like, cause we, the scenario we were playing is you basically have to survive 10 rounds and then you needed to have a surplus of six food at the end of that. Uh, and because we had a really easy time with food, we skipped two of the food ones, um, crises and we're like, okay, well we have enough, um, we have enough morale that we can skip crises mm-hmm. if we need to and we have more than enough food cards to get our our thing up and like at that point we had searched every location all of the extra location decks were completely empty and it was like so there's really nothing left for us to do besides like just kill zombies and put up barricades and like just wait for the game to end and i had a character where i could look at the top two crisis and like put them back in either order mm-hmm. so i could keep pushing bad ones off and stuff like that and so it was like i looked at a couple ones like okay now we have this we have this Let's just call it like we're done. Uh, so we called it uh, as a victory. And I think I am going to put my uh, Dead of Winters into the raffle for the game night mm-hmm. uh, anniversary because. Because you got that was... space one and you're like, this is the good one. Is there a space one of it? There is, but I don't remember. And it's called something that was very bad. Oh, OK. OK. Do you remember which one it was? That's not Gen 7. It was. OK. Yeah. That, it's not Dead of Winter in space, but it is a, a crossroads game. Yeah. Yes, it is a crossroads. Yes. Game. Yes. Um, I own that game and the expansion. There you go. Yeah, I good, have not. Good job. The, the Gen Seven had an expansion. Yes, it did. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, I found them for practically dirt cheap. I think I got both for eighteen dollars. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, okay. and I was like, you know what? Eighteen dollars might you, depends wasted, on how much you've wasted eighteen dollars on worse things. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but how much time am I willing to spend on the game? Nothing the so real, far. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so. You're good. <laughs> I want to draw attention to uh, Twitch chat. Uh-huh. There's been a discussion about eating horse. Yeah. So uh, Modest, who just subscribed, uh, says they have also had horse on purpose. Is Modest Karma someone we know? I think so. Okay. I don't remember who that. I don't know. I feel bad. Okay. Um, it's a Twitch name. It's fine. Yes. Renegade. Uh, so Jeff. <laughs> you uh, just. You, oh, yeah. yeah I'm just, I was just going to start reading Twitch names. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jeff, you said you've never eaten horse on purpose. I don't know if I've eaten horse or not. That's true. And uh, he's never knowingly eaten horse is what and, he's saying. And Mike Jones said, similarly, I have purposely avoided eating horse. Uh, I. I I doubt that that is true because I feel like as an American, you don't often come up with opportunities to eat horse. So you're not like intentionally avoiding it. But capitalism has probably fed us horse at one point or another. Sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'll buy that you've, you've never (laughs) knowingly eaten horse, but I don't think it's because you've purposely avoided it. It's not like you've seen horse on a menu and been like, no ho, sir, I do not want to eat that horse. Yeah. You have to like intentionally seek out horse as an American to Mm -hmm. get a chance to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. But was horse good? I, I actually liked it. Okay. It was weird. So I did it in Japan, and it was like sashimi style. So it was raw. Oh, horse. okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and, interesting. And it was, it was interesting. I'm going to have to say nay on that. <laughs> uh, you should feel bad for that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, last game I played, um, just to keep things moving and wrap up here, uh, I played Jime just today before the recording. So Megan and I played uh, another Jime. It was... Uh, one of the battle map ones, mm-hmm. uh, and it was fun. We raffle stomped a bunch of goblins that were trying to kill a dwarf as he ran around a tower. 
Um, but we did very, very, very good at killing goblins on that one. That's good. Uh, so it was no problemo. Nice. Um, and next up, we've got a journey map. So I don't know when we'll get a play, but that's what's on deck for that. I like Jime. I continue to enjoy Jime. I still have to go to Black and Red and buy all of the Jime. Before yeah. it's gone. Before it's gone. If it's not already, because that was like a month ago. Um, Could just go to the wizard's chest. They have it there. That also might be an option. Yes. So, um, but yeah, I think I'm going to buy, because I think I I want to get all of it sooner than later. You should. Because yeah. I'm not going to replay. Well, no, yeah. And you can just, stuff. that stuff will then get added into your exactly. game. Exactly. So. So, it's also that's, like done. Yeah. They're not yeah. making anymore. Oh, they're not making no, anymore? I did not realize that. This, no? this expansion was the last one. That's a little sad. Yeah. Sure. But also that, at least I know how much I'm going to invest in it. So. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, Mike Jones, sell him copies of Journeys in Middle Earth. The the only reason I don't go to the wizard chest more often is because I don't live anywhere near it. Whereas and we live I a live mile live away, like less than a mile yeah. away. Like I, can I still go to black, to black and red. And red. Yeah, yeah. I, of course, you would still go to black and red. It's right by your house. No, it's not. <laughs> Black and red? It's near no, us. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Wizards, wizard's, wizard's chest. chest. Wizard's <laughs> chest. The wizard's chest. I still go to the wizard's chest. Yeah. I went there and bought magic sleeves last for my 40k commander decks that I did not buy at the wizard's chest because they were immediately sold out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's it for uh, what we've been playing. Uh, now we can do a little bit of bantering before we move on to some news and Kickstarter stuff. Um, I saw... Everything, everywhere, all at once again yes. over the over the weekend in the theater in the theater, just as much of a the, they have it in like the big show. Yeah, I did saw they, it in the big did show. They have it in the big show. I saw before? it in the. They I did. they did. Okay. I saw it in the big show. Uh, I saw it again on the big show. J- just as much of an emotional roller coaster. Uh, it felt you know just especially the end with the rock and it's just like oh god <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's at all it all still worked 100 percent. and now i definitely know i need to show it to my mom when i go visit her in april yeah my mom uh my mom turned it off apparently uh at the scene where they're doing like increasingly improbable things i'm and she I'm, was like this is dumb and this has gotten to a point of dumbness that i'm going to turn it off and it was like mom you were like five minutes from an emotional wrecking ball that makes everything worth it yes i, I was going to tell that's going to tell my mom is just like like for one i'm gonna be like my stepdad you don't have to see this movie you're not you're not going to give it the chance that it needs to to like you said get you have to Except some of these things are going to happen before it fully envelops you in it and uh, is amazing. Yeah. I haven't seen it. You haven't? You should see it. What? I do. I, I really it. hope it wins. Uh, yeah. Best pitch. It, should, best it should win some stuff. I don't know, honestly, what what, what would beat, beat it for it. I can't think it of anything. It has 11 nominations or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, I think it's tied for the most, if not the yes, most. Yes, I think it is tied. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Titanic, Ben-Hur, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. And this, I think, maybe maybe other no, movies have had more nominations, yeah, but I think it, eleven. If it wins all eleven, it will be tied for the most wins, most Oscars. Yeah. Yeah. But it definitely has the most for this year, is what I was yes. specifically oh, yeah. and more verify. Well, yeah, uh, referring to yeah, um, I don't know, Banshees was good. I don't think it was as good as that though. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't see Banshees beating. I need. I need to watch Banshees, but from what you I've haven't heard, seen it, HBO? no, it's good. I've heard it's really good. Is it HBO? Yes, it is. Max. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Everything everywhere all at once is on something too. Might be. Might be. I also have it on it's Voodoo. Definitely worth seeing in theater, Vango. though. I think. Yeah. Um, speaking of HBO, Last of Us, another emotional train wreck yep. of a sh- of a episode. Mm-hmm. Um. Zach and I were joking before we started recording that, uh, you know, from playing the game, we kind of know some of the things that may or may not happen. Um, and especially since I played the game very recently, Same, like, yep. it's very fresh in my mind. Like I had forgotten one of the things that happened in this episode had happened when I the first time I played it. So when I played it the second time, I got walloped with it. This time it was like, oh, no, I know where they're going with this because they don't change things unless they're going to make them hurt more. <laughs> Yes. They don't, they don't I think they punches. say make the show better. Which is true. <laughs> Which is involves tr- making it work more. more. <laughs> I did not remember any part of the game that this took place in until they got to like the sniper alley part. Yeah. And I was like, there was like a part with like a sniper and yep. I was like, but that's all I remembered. Yeah. And yep. it, it turned into that part. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
So like, well, because you in the game there is a part where you're like charging a sniper and then you kill them and then you have to snipe down the street as people yeah. charge them and like so that yeah. all yeah one to one. Other than you, exactly other than you didn't kill like a dozen people to get to the sniper like you did in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he just kind of got to there. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. The the horde coming up out of the ground also not in the game. Uh. That you see in the trailers kind of. Uh, but still a cool scene regardless. Yeah. Uh, I liked one of your comments in the spoiler thread about uh, a clicker. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. all I'm going to say about no, it. No, no, it was uh, didn't know mm-hmm. and didn't. Uh, which I didn't. didn't. Which yeah, I which I didn't. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he had told me that he finally started watching, so he was watching four, and then uh, that he had started watching episode four, and I was like, oh, well, when you're done with that, I still haven't watched five yet because it got released early because of the Super Bowl. Yeah, it I was, was like, on a Friday. I was like, well, let me know afterwards and watch it. And then it's like, I, I feel like as soon as that got done, you just immediately walked out and you're like, all right, let's so, do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're doing it. And I was like in the middle it. of watching something else. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I continue to play a whole bunch of Dwarf Fortress. Uh, I talked about it in the Slack channel. I did not talk about it uh, on the show. I'm playing Last of Us 2, uh, and I had been really enjoying it. And then I got to a part, and it has been a few years, so I am going to spoil uh, this. At like halfway through the game, you all of a sudden start playing as like Abby, one of the like vague antagonists of the game. It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. It is all about perspective. It's like, but who's her antagonist? Yeah. It Does, doesn't mean that she's the bad guy. From her perspective... Other people, other are people bad, guys. bad guys. See, except now, see, on this is where I was complaining in the ge- in the game. Like, I think that's like I get that that's what they were trying to do. They yeah. failed. They failed horribly because all through playing her, I'm like, wow, she is just an absolute piece of shit, and she. Mm-hmm. I, I I look would disagree forward on that. to yeah. what you feel at the yeah. end of the game. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna get back into it tonight after the show. You're, you're gotta, saying all these words. You just have to remember those words when you finish the game. So at this stage in the game, I still hate her. Mm. And I don't like playing I've, as her. I also don't like playing as her because time I, passes. The and skills, you're like, bah, just the skills and stuff like uh, her abilities and weapons. Like mostly because now I'm back to using those goddamn shivs. And like one of the greatest things about two was not having to worry about fucking shivs. Well, and her two fucking guns. Yeah, <laughs> she's she, fucking ripped. Yeah, yeah she is. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I only, the only thing that bothered me about the shivs in the first one was that you had to use them to unlock doors. So you, you didn't want to kill things with it. Now you don't have to worry about that. So see, I still have to like, cause you can't kill too many things with it. Cause you know, it, there's a finite amount of, yeah, but then there's all the guns. I don't know if you know, this game has guns. Adrian, mm-hmm. yeah, the guns make everything attack you. Yeah, and then you kill well, them with the guns. You just put another like... plastic bottle on the end of your fucking pistol, yeah, and you're yeah. good to go. Yeah, I mean, I do like that there are more silenced <laughs> weapons in the game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I like a lot of the characters around Abby. Just don't really like Abby still. Mm. We'll see. We'll see where it ends up. We'll see. There's no way to know. No way. To just know. know that all the wrong people hate Abby. So just keep that in mind. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of the way. Most of the God damn it. Not yeah. saying that you can't just know who you're with is Yeah, all... you're on God damn it. You're on their side. They're yeah. gonna be like, Yeah, this guy gets <laughs> You're on the free folk side. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm in danger. Yep. Yeah. Um cool. There's yeah. two last of us subreddits. There's yes. the there's the good one and, and then there's the bad one. Yeah. Yep. You're in the bad one right You're now. You're in the bad one right now. Yes. <laughs> the bad place. We'll good see, we'll good see people can hate her, but no bad people like her is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so spoilers um, for season two, I guess. I mean. And three. Yeah. Oh. Of the TV show. Yeah. yeah. I still didn't really spoil much about what happens. No. I'm curious to see how they'll do this in the show now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, this is that what we're be, saying of like, yeah, you, there's a clear, can't do there's a clear the thing split. that can't work. Yeah, yes. so. They'll have to run them like almost simultaneously yeah. and then have like a. Simulcast. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, I don't, I don't know how they'll do it. It'll be very interesting. And I'm, I'm sure it'll be good because it's been good so far. So. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, that's, that's my banter because I, I mentioned I've been playing a lot of Dwarf Fortress, but yeah. there's not, I don't have interesting things to like. It's just, it's so good. It hits Has what I want. Has your Fey moods been? Oh, man. I'm getting so good at managing them. <laughs> My dudes make all kinds of cool shit when they get a Fey mood or get possessed or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. I had a giant human baby attack my current fort. Okay. It was. I have also played zombies ate my neighbors. <laughs> are, are, is it is it a giant human baby just because you're a dwarf and then just human babies are giant as a result of you being small? I don't think so. It was okay. like 20 foot tall. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it died shockingly easy. <laughs> Well, it is a baby. It is a baby. Yeah, but it's 20 foot tall. Yeah, but it's like, they have soft heads, so just like one. <laughs> a dog killed it. I don't know how the dog got to its it 20 foot tall head. It probably clamped onto its soft head, and then it. I feel like it. That was that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It did, the baby did kill my fisher dwarf mm. on the way to the war dog killing the baby. Well, mostly killing the baby. My militia showed up and, f- you know, finished clubbing it while it was down. Probably because the baby <laughs> smushed the, the, the dwarf small, uh, soft head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, really, really, really like Dwarf Fortress. Scratches my they've, calling. They've made sin. a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, I saw a graph of like their revenue over the last like four 10, years. 15,000 like a month. Like, <laughs> and then seven million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You guys have any other bantery things? Been playing World of Warcraft. I think you mentioned that last time. And yeah. I said, getting, I'm sorry. Getting close to maxing out the reps. Only got like two more <laughs> left. <laughs> um... I did the look the the LFR the looking for raid yeah. basically public like less than normal difficulty because you're with a bunch of randoms. My gear is better than LFR already. Yeah, just by doing like, and I've not run any mythics, just through like world quests mm-hmm. and other stuff. Yes, it's just like all of this shit dropping is way not good. <laughs> yeah, I just want the set pieces, and that's all I really care about. Yeah. Yeah. And then also there's all there's like necklaces that you if you get both of them you can trade in for a mount. And then I have ended up with both of those necklaces just at random. Oh nice. Yeah. And What's the mount? It's one of the otters. Oh, meh. Yeah. Um but one I'm actually using. So once I replace that, <laughs> I can just turn them both in. There you like, go. Mount, please. Yeah, they did some weird weird stuff. Like there's one that you know, takes like three rings. Yeah. Um this past Sunday was oh, the super. I, oh, oh and I played oh, a little yeah. high on life. I started it and it was like, okay, this is fun, but then it rapidly got fucking old. It's, it, I, I went through the second world, um, like the second full world or the first real, like big world that wasn't like the tutorial world. Uh, and it was enjoyable. I haven't left that world the, before the plant, I stopped playing. The plant sort of foresty, yeah, jungle. Yeah, jungle so I'm spot. in the, I'm in yeah. there. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I had it downloaded for a while. I hadn't played it, and then I was just like, mm, I'd rather just play other things than yeah. this. So, so I, just, it's, it's I really like it's, the it's start. free on yeah, it's free on Game Pass. That's, that's where right. I got yeah, it. Yeah. From. Yeah. The uh, the FPS Metroidvania is is so far so good. Okay, I just got the second gun. Gotcha. It's got a different voice. I'd hope so. Get the knife. Oh, and yet? I saw I saw the oh yes I've okay. gotten the I've gotten the knife. I feel the knife is voiced by the Australian Rick and Morty. Dude, well, obviously, but it it sounds like that parody Rick and Morty that someone animated that was them out in the bush, and right. it was like, we gotta drive five hours across the bush, <laughs> and it sounds just like that guy, the uh, knife. Gotcha. Yeah, Australian Rick. Yeah, I uh, I did not get to a second gun. I only have had the first gun. It's after the the, the boss of that area. Yeah, it's a shot. Um, it's a shotgun. Then the the knife is okay. Um, I stabbed the guy on the couch. Yeah. I really liked the <laughs> the like very beginning the little like two D like oh the yeah whatever <laughs> it was like whatever the sequel was uh-huh. it, where he had to fight his ex wife yeah and now it's the sequel and he has to fight all of his ex wife's boyfriends now yeah yeah <laughs> um. Yeah, the the guy like narrating it is like his divorce attorney or something. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, and just it's just Justin Roiland. But yes, yeah. uh, and then I also liked uh, the very first time you get the gun. If you don't shoot the bad guys, it increasingly berates you about like not shooting them. Yes, uh, which I it's like you need to murder. Yeah, you know how to do this. Like if if you pause it and I'm pausing, he's like, did you just hit pause? How do how did you confuse that for the shoot button? <laughs> All I needed yeah. from the game, I got. Well, I, I've heard and it's got, also like eight to ten hours, like to just finish it too. Yeah, so it's short. Not, it's short. I got. Yeah. Well, it depends if you watch the entirety of Tammy and the T Rex. Oh, that's true. That's in there. Yeah. There's also other movies that are in that game. I don't oh, doubt geez. it. Yeah. So. And also, the Red Letter Media people are also in that game. I did not know that either. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I just want to get to the red letter meteor <laughs> part. Gotcha. Where they mystery science theater all the movies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. You started to say. I did. Uh, and I used that time to go to Ikea. Wow. Because no one was there. <laughs> that's smart plan. Smart plan. Uh, I'll, Although I did time it a little bad, at least driving there, because I got a notice on my uh, like Nvidia Shield thing that was like Super Bowl like coverage starts at basically eleven o'clock our time, and I was like, oh, surely it means the Super Bowl is already going on now at like three, and then I and then I would and I was like, oh, four thirty, Jesus Christ! I was yeah. leaving at four, like so it took me like forty five minutes to get down there, but then at that point it was four thirty, so it, it had cleared out at that point, so. Uh, we went and watched it with some friends of ours here in town who are big Eagles fans, and so it was a sad day. Mm -hmm. But I figured that was my best chance like, of enjoying it. It was like, I'll go watch it with people who actually have a reason to care, because I don't have a reason to care other than hating the Chiefs. And then, boy, do I hate the Chiefs even more. Fuck them. Rightfully so. Yeah. I do think it's funny now in the AFC West, the Broncos have three Super Bowls. The Raiders have three Super Bowls. The Chiefs have three Super Bowls. The Chargers have yeah. no Super Bowls. <laughs> uh, and yes, Mike Jones, I hate all of the Chiefs, uh, w especially because Patrick Mahomes is so damn likable that it makes me hate him even more because he Dude, is a Chief. I saw people hate his brother or something. Patrick Mahomes' brother. I is didn't know he had a brother. Yeah, so, basically sure. a big shit heel or something. <laughs> sure. Yeah. This I'm was not, an interesting okay. Super Bowl because it was the first Super Bowl ever where there were two brothers playing on priest uh, Holmes, both sides. <laughs> Is that his name? Um, I feel like I do hate Priest Holmes, I but know. I don't really remember. I did see some people. Yes, definitely Dante Hall. Uh, mentioned with two brothers, like from Rick and Morty. Yeah. On this. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they have a podcast that they've been doing like all season. Yeah. Uh and it's interesting like uh my one of my friends uh who I was watching it with, he said he like after the Super Bowl was like decided who it was going to be, he binged the whole podcast and he said it was really interesting watching them like knowing that they would end up playing each other, watching Re them slowly, slowly realize that they, like they're going oh to. fuck, we're going to be playing each other probably. Yeah. Like there's a good chance we're going to play each other. Oh shit, we're going to play each other. Do they does one of them play offense and one defense or are they both on the same I think they are both offense, but no, I'm not that's sure. That's a bummer. Because then you can't get, you're not getting actual like all confrontation. All of them, Mike Jones. All of them. Who is he naming? Chiefs players. Oh, just. I think these are some of the more likable ones. I see. Some of them. They've had some real pieces of shit, though, also on their team. I mean, every team has. Broncos have had some real pieces of shit on their team. Mm. Kind of goes hand in hand with being an NFL player, apparently, being a piece of shit. Yeah, probably. There's some good ones, but they are fewer and far between. Mm. Anyway. I think that's it. I, think I got nothing else. Um, before we do news and Kickstarters, sort of listener feedback. Uh, I talked last week about the game that Taylor went to go play. That was the like, what's it called? Uh, I don't remember. It's been a whole week. So the game I was talking about that I thought it was was um the AI generated one. That was vaguely popular and then got their shit locked up by, uh, oh my God. The, you, it's a card game. All of the cards Key were. Keyforge. Keyforge, yes. Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> yes. And it, so it's not the sequel. The Twitch to, channel that got banned? <laughs> it's not Keyforge. It's not the Keyforge like sequel. Yeah. Uh, it was, well, maybe it is because it's Soulforge. Yes. Okay. Soulforge? So, is that right? Soulforge Fusion is the game. That, I see. Uh, that Taylor went to go play. Uh, she got 11 out of 85 people uh, at the tournament. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I am unfamiliar with uh, – it is a Richard Garfield game. So. Yep. Okay. Stoneblade Entertainment. That looks familiar. Shards of Infinity, Ascension. Ah, uh, okay. There's such nice. a people. Gotcha. But yeah, so there, there you go. Okay. On to some news now. On to some news. And ignoring Mike Jones as he continues to list Chiefs players. Just assume yes, Mike Jones. Oh, especially that guy. Yeah, especially because he has my same last name. That prick. First up on news, uh, speaking of crowdfunding, GameFound didn't do so hot, but no one did. Saying they didn't do so hot is an interesting way of saying they didn't meet their goals, but they still had a 45% increase in revenue, which I think most companies would say, yes, sign me up, please. Here's the funny thing about companies is that if you're expecting 
fifty percent and you get a forty five, it's a disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know if they were actually expecting it. Like reading through this article, it I sounds no like the founder much. he set a goal uh, where they wanted to bring in twenty five percent of Kickstarter's revenue from tabletop projects in twenty twenty one. Uh, in the end, instead of sixty seven point five million, uh, they only brought in twenty eight point three million. Uh, still increasing their revenue, like I said, forty five percent. Uh, which is crazy to me that like he wanted to increase it well over a hundred percent then to get to sixty seven point five. Like that seems crazy. Double. He wanted double. I yeah. mean, I want. I feel like game game found like had more big name ones than they did previously. Yes, they're definitely year, moving so, in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Kickstarter they just, saw a $33 million decline in their board game. So it seems like, you know, probably... Where'd that other $5 million go? R- roughly where it went. Uh, well, some of it went to, I don't know, what there was the third one that... Backer kit? Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Have they started doing crowdfunding by that point? Let's say Frosthaven. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no. No, Frosthaven, Frosthaven was, was still on Kickstarter. Yeah. Was it? Yes. yes. He... We were looking at my. Remember, there's a dog. Oh, maybe I think Cephal Affairs next. All their future stuff is going yes. through yes. the backer kit, but Frosthaven was not. I, and I want to say that I remember saying like one. Uh, there's one or two things for it, and then um, Hasbro had their pulse last year, which is done now. Already I think. over. Yeah, they yeah. were like, yeah. well, this didn't work. Yeah, that's what Hero Quest went through, and then yeah. failed on. Yeah, or not Hero Quest. Uh, uh, wait, no, it was Hero. Uh, it was Hero Quest. Was no, it, it was no uh, the other one. Heroescape. Heroescape. That's what yes. it was. Oh, yes. yeah. Heroescape did not get millions of dollars. Like they only needed hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they're like, nah, not worth it. <laughs> he's still going. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just imagining he's looking at a roster and then just like not even copying it, but like typing it down. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So yeah. That's, Do they uh, have uh, better goals for next year or or this year? I, I guess? think they said something about like, yeah, backer kit's gonna cut into ours. We were gonna be better than Kickstarter, but now there's a third one, and yeah, yeah. Who knows? It seems like it's all falling off. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Cephalfire went to backer kit, not Game Found. So Game yep. Found, not not Happy. in a good spot. Yeah. There's no way to know. No, uh, I look. I remember looking at Game Found right now, and there were like. I feel like they always have a bunch of previews, but then it's like you go to crowdfunding and it's like eight. There's just eight of them right now. Yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a big, they always, they have like a big one or two, but. Andromeda's Edge yeah. is happening right now. Yeah. And there's, there's going to be a Street another, Fighter one later. There's going to be another Street Fighter yeah. one, whatever Witchbound is. Yeah. Um, they did set a new goal. Their goal for 2023 is 50 million in backer dollars by the end of the year. Um, but. This article does point out that might be tough because a lot of things have been way underperforming, like Wormwood, Hasbro having all of their crowdfunding failures, uh, and then Elven Ring. Oh, that's right. Worm, Wormwood uh, failed on their desk m- modular desk that was like four, th- like three yeah, or four thousand yeah, dollars. It was extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Tainted Grail reprint didn't do as well as the original. Yeah. It only did four million out of its original twelve million, and they mm-hmm. were expecting to beat twelve million. Well, I didn't back it, so that's probably why. Yeah, you. I was going to back eight million, but I decided not to. <laughs> eight million dollars. <laughs> Still need to play that and the two other campaigns. I mean, that Tainted I got. Grail is extremely highly rated. Oh, we've, I've got it. We can yeah, play it just any time. Yeah, I've got the map. We'll just get through the ninety hours of Madara first, yeah. and then. Well, this is a this is a one to four player game that's best at one or two. So <laughs> also, when are I've we heard... going to start playing pan or not pandemic? Uh, Betrayal Legacy again, or pandemic, or pan- <laughs> 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 that's at least just you and I. That's easier to coordinate than you, me, Jeff, seems, and Megan playing. Seems Betrayal. like it's a pretty heavy no at four. Yeah, but also I think there are some people at four would be fine with. So. Yeah. Anyway, moving on in news from Game Found Falling Short. Uh, Acquire is getting its, I don't know, eighth edition, seventh, something absurd. Yes. Um, it's interesting. So uh, they mentioned here, and I saw this somewhere else, that it's like the best alternative to Monopoly, which I don't feel like is something to brag about. Like literally anything is a good alternative. Well, I think what it means... Is like that it, it is a, similar? It like it. I mean, it's about acquire acquiring things. Shockingly enough, um, 
on it's the board, but it's money. Yeah, it's got money, and <laughs> you're per, you know you're you're buying properties from people, uh, trying to uh, get like monopolies and stuff on the board. But it is a at least the one time I played it, uh, let's say fourteen years ago, <laughs> uh, it was a lot better sure. than Monopoly. Uh, is this? Do they say if it's going to be a plastic edition or if it's going to be a cardboard? Because there was. The best version of it was like in the yeah. 90s or, or late 2000s, early 2000s the, that was plastic. The return of like the plastic. original 9 by 12 plastic game good, board. Good, good. And this, of course, will is coming. plastic tiles and building pieces with the classic theming of the hotel chains that players can buy. Uh, this is also coming as a deal between Renegade and Hasbro. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be shocked if this was down the line after HeroScape and then they saw how poorly their pulse thing went. And then we're like, let's just get a regular yeah. publisher to make this. Although apparently it says here Renegade is working on reprinting and releasing new editions of other Hasbro games like World War II Epic Axis and Allies yeah. and Robo Rally. Ooh. And Robo -Rally. Diplomacy. I still have... I would try a new I, edition of Diplomacy. Yeah. See how well this friendship wreck game See if we can finally kill this podcast yeah, once and for all. Finally. I've never played Diplomacy. Neither None of I. None of I. Yeah. But yeah, uh, later in 2023 is the release. Uh, the price and official release date are yet to be confirmed. But it's not Kate, it's not $100. There will be an acquired championship at Gen Con this year. So. Oh, that's cool. Potentially <sighs> indicating a release. Oh, well, yeah. God damn it, Boyd's in on the naming Chiefs players now. Yeah. Although well, just, I feel like he missed, he just, like yeah. Trent Green was already ma mentioned. Yeah, I did, maybe not. I did forget to mention. There was that, a Trent, I think, but not. Yeah. I did forget to mention that for Gen Con, we were able to get a hotel. Yeah. Oh, we, nice. yeah. We've got a we've got a connected hotel because I probably won't have car access anymore, yep. so we won't be able to do the fly into Chicago drive down. Yep. Not that it was any like real cheaper last year, but it was yes. nice having a car. But now we just have a connected hotel. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that. Mm. Besides yeah. just like lifting to whatever which, food we want, which we would do anyways. Yeah. I mean, look, there's only going to be like two meals that where it isn't going to be that. Uh, isn't going to be, be kill rice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. It'll, I don't think I've ever stayed. Oh, no. We had the Omni, yeah, but the it wasn't Omni. really connected. But yeah. The Omni was the only one that I've had that's been yeah. like close in the past. <laughs> um, I feel like one of these days I could probably convince Megan to go back. Uh, if we made it a focus to play more games instead of like just touring the hall all the time. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the things that also sucked is that was the year that we went with like fucking 12 people. Yeah. And in that Airbnb. And yeah, just organizing just car rides to the convention yes. was a goddamn nightmare. Yeah, yeah it was. Because we had the giant van. So yeah. I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. If, um, you, if you missed the boat, yeah. take a lift. Mm -hmm. Anyway. A room is going to run you about 1,000 to 1,200 depending on the location. Yeah. Just an FYI. But Good thing I got that 25% exactly. raise. Right? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that was one of the things that helped me push for um, doing that over uh, the Super 8 for the fourth year in a row was you getting that 25% <laughs> raise. Good. I'm yeah. glad me getting the raise helped <laughs> encourage you to get the hotel So what room. we can do is we'll use the podcast funds to pay for a third of the room. Yep. Zach and I will split a third and then Wes Let's pays <laughs> a full third. <laughs> That's four thirds. <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 We're paying a sixth. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So we yeah. split. We split a third. Oh, Wes pays a third, and yeah. the podcast pays. That's fine, as long as he doesn't know that we do that. He won't. He'll be <laughs> none the wiser. There's no way he'll ever find out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, moving on to crowdfunding. Speaking of crowdfunding budgets and things. First up, we got the the Zoo Vadis. Yes. So I don't remember if we actually talked about this. We did, yeah. Okay. So uh, Zoo Vadis, we talked about briefly as being the remake of uh, Quo Vadis. Yes. Uh, I mean, did Jeff want to go through his normal spiel? For well, we were talking about things, Fuck. but yes. Oh, yeah. uh, it is well-funded <laughs> at 117000 of its $15,000 goal, 1,900 backers, and uh, just a few days left to pledge for this one at about 70 bucks. Yeah. Uh, so when we say a few days, also like Zach is saying he's going to edit this tonight. Look, I did the it last, last one. Happened like happened the night almost of, immediately. So. Yeah, this has three days from the time of recording. So like very seventy, 70 hours, hours from yeah. right now when we're um, recording. So Eight, anyway, seventeen p.m. Mountain Standard Standard day, Daylight Time. Daylight Daylight the, MDT. The next time we play Kingdom Death will be Daylight Savings Celebration. 
Zoo Vadis. Yes. <laughs> and Gussie about, Gorillas. We talked about, I'm not going to mention Gussie Gorillas at all. It is on here, but it's not going to be a part of this, this is, one for time, a, it, time it's reasons. It's a game. Yeah. So, uh, so based off Quo Vadis that we talked about a couple episodes ago, mm-hmm. that basically it's a massive re-theme and re-implementation, like kind of updating and making a little bit more modern, a fairly classic Reiner Knizia game. Uh, it's three to seven players, 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, and and that's not per player. No. It okay. seems to be just 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, you are basically taking on the roles of different animals in the zoo, and you are politicking your way to being in the featured attraction at the zoo. Uh, so you have to bribe people to get to move past them, and you kind of move around and you collect these little wreathy uh, point th- tokens uh, on the board. And then only the people who make it into the main exhibit. Laurels? Laurels. Thank <laughs> no, you. Uh, I, was scrolling down, I was scrolling down a bit to try and fi- find the word because no, I'd I, seen it earlier. I didn't even look at it. I just knew that you were wrong and what they were. <laughs> I mean, I was not wrong. They are leafy things. Uh, <laughs> I heard reefy things. <laughs> uh, re- I mean, they're kind of like a wreath also. Yeah. Um, no, reef. R-E-E-F. Oh, no, Why? no. That's what I heard is no, reefy things. No, no. I think I said wreathy things, like a, like a wreath you'd put no, on no, your door. No. You, uh, it could have been heard three different wrong ways, is what yeah. we're saying. <laughs> Two of those ways are less wrong. Reef was uh, r- was right out. I didn't That's say three strikes. You're <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, only the people who make it into the final exhibit actually compare the total number of laurels that they have collected, and then whoever has the most laurels and made it into that exhibit wins. Um, but yeah, you basically uh, there's a whole lot of different uh, bribing and uh, like. Moving things, negotiations. There's a neutral token that's these peacocks that you move around that everybody can kind of move so they can like try to block people with them and then uh, they can be bribed if you want to get past someone that blocked you with it. Um, yeah. Asymmetric animal abilities are getting added to this one that I don't know if we're in the original game. Uh, the art looks uh, much, much better as the we talked one? about yeah. in, the, in the article. Uh, it's by Quan Chi Moria and... Uh, Bridget uh, Indelicto? Indelicto? I don't know. I do not know. Uh, I, that's one I don't recognize. Like, I don't recognize that name. So that's a new artist to me. Uh, but the art looks good. Uh, and then they bumped up the production value and everything. Can you get it without Gussie Gorillas? Or do you need to get Gussie Gorillas to get this game? <laughs> uh, you can get Gussie Gorillas for 20 You can get just Zuvatis for 45 You can get both of them for 59 Oh, you can get a mystery game if you just like Adrian. Just don't pay attention to the game at all. What I said you can you can just get them both and then get a mystery game oh. that that you have no idea yeah. what it's about. The Zuvatis Deluxe Edition is sixty nine bucks. Uh, I the what's, it what's upgrades deluxe? Okay. the hundred and two cardboard laurel tokens to weighted clay poker chips. All 14 cardboard animal ability tokens upgrade to wood, and it replaces all seven cardstock paper animal screens with thick cardboard for a reasonable-ish $25. I don't know. All right. But yeah. Cool. So moving your little animals around, voting, and doing things. I don't know why a game would ever include storage bags, Boyd. I have more than I need. Yeah. So that's uh, that's Zoo Vadis, sequel to Quo Vadis, Reiner Knizia Classic. Apparently, I've never played it. Go see Gorillas seems neat, though. So you have a hand of cards. You you just blind it. So it's a blind, like, so, trading game. So the theme will make this make a lot more sense. You are different gorillas who are cl- grooming, grooming each yeah. other, and you want to get the best collection of dirt and, and I, critters and things. So I, I applaud you for making him have to talk about yeah, this yeah, game. Yeah. So <laughs> it's... <laughs> so it's, so it's, it's a card, but it's facing away from you, Hanabi yes. style. Other people are like... Then like trading you for cards, but you're trying to get uh, sets, well not sets, you're trying you to get- You want to get one of everything. Yes. And any pairs are removed at the end of the game. And then you're, there's like special abilities and stuff like that, that kind of change up what your score will be. And then there's yeah. like bananas that you can sweeten the pot with. Yeah. Or or if no one's like bidding on your card, you can put a second card in your hand. Yeah. For you get people. dealt like a small deck and you Is it take the top card real and pull time? the face out. I think mostly round based, maybe. I don't know. Real time negotiation. There with you go. A real twist. time. Yeah, and because you can even say like, "Fuck it, none of you want this. I'll take it for my. I'll get my own fucking thing." But you don't know what it was, so you may have just given yourself a pair. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. It does sound kind of cool. I was just trying to, you know, brevity's sake. We're already almost an hour and a half into this thing. Minutes. And there's like positive and negative numbers as well. So thus almost. Yes. But not quite yet. <laughs> not anyway. Quite. Yeah, it seems um, all right. Yeah. yeah. If you want to throw an extra like 15 bucks onto your pledge, then you could do that. Does yeah. it have a deluxe edition or is it just No, the it's just the it it's does just whatever the thing is, yeah. Uh but it is only $14 to add it to the Gussie uh to the Zoo Vadis Deluxe. So, you know, you save a buck that way. There you go. That's true. Next up on Kickstarter. Next up, All Play has their new four game Kickstarter collection, also known as the uh, boardgametables.com traditional small box. Here's a bunch of shit. The publisher formerly known as. Yes. <laughs> uh, very well funded. $250,000 of its $20,000 goal. About 3,500 backers. Two weeks left to pledge this one, which you can get all four games for $76? Yeah. Four small is, boxes, four big games, four unique experiences is their tagline. Is that the base one or is that like with the the That is the most popular this? one. Yeah, uh, so one ninety nine to get all of the small games, which is literally, literally fucking of, everything they've ever yeah. done. But yes, yeah, seventy six for just all the games. There is no. Yeah, you have to add on the deluxe components. Uh, yes, you would have to add Ooh. on the deluxe. No, it includes two expansions and four upgrades. So yeah, it okay. comes with the. Yeah, so the seventy six includes the upgraded components. Oh yeah, for it all says four free games. right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Anyways, there's four games. Four games. Uh, so there is Chomp, which is a layered tile laying game. <laughs> Sale, that is a cooperative trick taking game. Boo. Couture, uh, a multiple simultaneous action game. Auctions. Auctions, Auctions game. <laughs> Brain. You, not mi- you missed the U. I did, indeed. And like uh, Mindspace, a puzzly polyomino roll and write. Uh, I remember looking at Chomp a little bit, and I was like, "This reminds me of Sprawlopolis a yeah, bit." Yeah, that's what it looks like a little bit as well. Yeah, or so, that Hanju game that I had. Yeah, I have. Yeah, so in Chomp, uh, each turn you're choosing to take a point scoring goal card, or you're taking a card that you can add to your ever sprawling dino inhabited land. You get to score points for feeding your dinosaurs and fulfilling your goal cards. But you have to be careful not to let your dinosaurs eat each other. Not sure how any of those mechanics work. Dinosaurs probably don't want to be next to each other. I assume, like, it looks like there are little cliff bands on the cards, so you might have to keep, like, dinosaurs segregated oh, into yeah. their own little, yeah, yeah. like, areas. Mm. Dinosaur <laughs> segregation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up on sale, that's a uh, trick-taking game unlike any other. You steer your boats and fight the Kraken based on which cards are played to the trick and who wins the trick. Uh, There are four different difficulty levels in a scenario book, or you can build your own on a customized map. Um, Yeah, it looks like tiles with a bunch of different, like, tokens and such on them. Can you back these individually? or Yes, you can back them individually for 19 each. Okay. Uh, Couture, uh, every turn there are three simultaneous auctions. You cannot win them all, but can you win the right ones? Uh, competing to model different types of fashion, each with its own scoring criteria. And then Mindspace, uh, how do you fit all that stuff in your head? How do you organize it in a fun and fulfilling way without being stressful? The dice are going to throw things at you, but you arrange your pursuits and priorities uh, in your brain. So. That one just looks like a polyomino fill, fill in the area thing. Mm, yarp. And the dice are sort of determining the order that you do it or something. I don't know because there's two threes, so I can't imagine like that you have to do that one. Do you like, have to have like three of that size and to see how many of those you can fit? A, we can scroll down further and find out because that's just the rough overview of the four games. Okay. Um, in Chomp, going back to the first of them, it's uh, eight turns. Uh, every card in the game has a point scoring goal on one side and a dinosaur landscape on the other. You get to choose from three rolls of goals and three rows of dino cards. Um, as you add cards to your land, you're going to try to form herds, making sure they are all well-fed and maximize the goals you unlock. Um, there's like little tokens that represent like eggs and food and stuff. Um, it is the latest edition of their one minute to teach line. If you have mountain goats, GPS, Sequoia, and dandelions, you'll notice how the aesthetic matches the style of those games. I Did we play Sequoia? That's the one with the, uh, yeah, that's the dice one. Yes. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, the Flyers and Scavengers expansion brings you eight new cards and some secret objectives, uh, and then you can get the component upgrade to make everything into chunky wooden dino meeples. Um, as for playing, each player is building their own dino land. You're drafting dinos and goals, building herds by placing them next to each other or on top of each other, uh, completing your different goals that you can draft, and then feeding dinosaurs. Uh, you you got to feed them, but it doesn't super go into how you actually do that. Um, I wonder if it has like carnivores that have to eat a certain amount of other dinosaurs or something. or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for sale, I did sale. not realize this. <laughs> it is a trick-taking uh, two-player game, oh, uh, which okay. is an important note about that one. Um, each round, you and your partner will play tricks until one of you wins four tricks. As you play while following suit, you will attempt to play cards with icons that pair with what your partner plays. Playing these special icon pairs allows you to move your ship or to fight the Kraken. Playing icons that form the wrong kind of pair makes the Kraken attack you. Uh, hopefully you can get on the same page as your partner and make it to the finish before the end of the fifth round and before the Kraken wrecks your ship. Um, yeah, there's an expansion and there's a component upgrade for it as well. For playing, uh, it's basic trick-taking rules. Uh, there's different scenarios, uh, varying difficulty. Uh, you sail forward by both playing star like little sunburst looking symbol cards, steer your ship by controlling which player wins the trick, so left or right, uh, and then you play cannons, I think, pairs. I think they're supposed to be suits. That makes sense. Yeah. Sure. I don't, maybe. Uh, play cannons to attack the Kraken. If you both play tentacles, it will attack you. Uh, reach the end of the board in less than five hands and before the Kraken destroys your ship. Uh, for Couture, um, for that one, each turn, new cards will be available in each of the three cities. All players simultaneously make secret bids in each city using their influence card. The player who bids the most in a particular city gets first pick in that city, second most, second pick, and so on. Some of the cards will give you immediate points. Others will replace influence cards in your hand, giving you more bidding power. However, most of the cards will help you compete for magazine covers via different majorities and set collection mechanics, which score points at the end of the game. Model with the highest score after seven rounds will win. Um, there is a component upgrade for this one. No uh, no expansion. Um, the component upgrade seems pretty big. Yeah. Uh, seven turns with three simultaneous auctions per turn. You bid in each city. Wear the look that helps you complete sets. Gain notoriety, uh, which increases your bidding power. Avoid flops, which are negative points. And then at the end, you score points based on what type of fashion you've put together. And lastly, the Mindspace Polyomino game. Um, each pursuit, uh, you're pursuing calm and peacefulness by adding pursuits to your brain. Each pursuit is represented by a different polyomino shape of a certain color. Purple is friendship, orange is hobbies, pink is romance, blue self-improvement, green is finances. Um, and each color has a thematic score related to that type of pursuit. Uh it has a component upgrade, but no uh, expansion. For playing it, each player has a brain to fill. Each turn, you roll dice to assign colors to the polyominoes. So that determines that's what the dice are for Zach. Um, you choose an activity and you place it on your brain. You fill it in like a flip and fill style polyomino game. Achieve life goals by prioritizing and arranging your activities. And you score points by fitting different aspects of your life together well. Uh, maybe I will do better at this than I do in real life of balancing priorities. Um, and then there's, uh, there's different sections of the brain. It seems like if you fill those up, you, you can uh, get bonus points and stuff. Yep. Five. There's also some areas that like just straight up can't be filled, so you have to kind of work around them. Uh, one, four oh. by, one two by two, one two by one, and two one by ones. Uh, so they're probably just your core traumatic memories that you just can't... <laughs> Those are just a part of you forever. Yeah, so. childhood trauma. Yeah. How did your parents fuck you up before you even were a real person? I would say for me, out of all of these, sale seemed like two op or two person cooperative trick taking seemed like cooperative trick taking. I'm a big fan of. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see like with that board to see if it was something. I would like to play all of them, but. As we kind of mentioned, I think, I don't know if I, it might have been off stream or is at the very start of talking about this. The track record of these games being really good is not 
really good. Yeah, you said like you played the GPS game that you, and you weren't a fan of it, right? Yeah, you just spin a dial and yeah, yeah, you put things out. So I, th- I think the ones that have been the most interesting to me are the ones that have a like good player interaction. Yeah, like I felt Sequoia did. Yeah. Uh so. I think the dinosaur one interests me the least of this because I've played just enough of those style of like, yes, it didn't lay cards to make a pretty pattern. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like it added too much onto that one, but I don't know. Yeah, I've done yeah. a bunch of flip and fill type stuff, polyomino games. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, I'll try a new one. I think that's why sale, like, is yeah. the one I was I'd be interested in just because of that same thing. I was, yeah. I also like. I'm always looking for like games that make it and I could conceivably that are small that we could take with us like on a trip, yeah, and be able to bust out. Mm-hmm. So I would also be very interested in sale. And Jeff, I know you don't like trick taking, so no, I don't. It's the worst thing about you. It's fine. Just you and Paul could play that together, and then great. And th- yeah, and then <laughs> either you'd kill him or murder yourself. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure which one of you would die in that scenario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would play so badly that he would die. Yeah. <laughs> just die from it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so that is expensive. Chomp sale, Couture, yeah. Mind Space sale. Yep. Uh, yeah. It's also expensive to take Get a gamble four. on four games that may or may not be good. Yeah. One more or call it. You can just call it. Let's just call it. Still got three weeks. Still got well, three weeks. But, oh, yeah. I guess we're technically recording next week. So, yeah. 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 You should be. And then technically recording. Two In three weeks, weeks. after yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. That's it for this episode. I don't think that, I forgot to look for, for there listener is. feedback. There is listener feedback. Yes. There yep. is listener feedback. Is it the Gmail, the email types? Yes. Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh, that's not. <laughs> Got to <laughs> switch this fine. first. Yeah, there People we go. can see our email. There's nothing important in there, I'm sure. Probably not. It, it's the one that already has been looked at. Oh, this son of a bitch. Yep. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. If you would like to send us an email, I have to look at the screen. Do you remember how to read, Jeff? Not well. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This one is from uh, Mr. Kaiser, a.k.a. The the Hater hater himself. From hundreds of episodes at this point. Way back. uh, Titled, Sorry for Slacking. I just wanted to tell you something you probably actually remember by now. That the owner of most of Denver sports teams is Stan uh, Kroenke? Kroenke? Uh, Something like that, yeah. Uh, Weirdly, I actually only know this off the top of my head because he also owns Arsenal, the English soccer team I follow. There's a weird trend in English soccer where the teams are being brought up either by American, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester, United, uh, Liverpool, and more which makes the English very, very mad. <laughs> or by uh, Petro States, Manchester City is the United Arab Emirates, Newcastle United is Saudi Arabia, Chelsea used to be a Russian oil billionaire uh, before the war in Ukraine, which makes the English even more mad. So the Americans look good in comparison. <laughs> Arsenal fans used to hate Kroenke because he never invested in the team, but after a very successful rebuild, they're looking likely to win the league this year. And all of a sudden, they all love his son, Josh, who seems to be running things there now. <laughs> also, I'm glad you liked uh, Karen Sinsui, Zach. Mike Jones got me into it. I'd love to get a bigger game going at a game night soon. And I'll be happy to play Rising Tide with you and Megan anytime, Adrian. And thank you for reading all of this out for me, Jeff. I still hate you all. Love the hater. Yeah. So we played Stockpile. So we have interacted recently. Yes. Uh, and you played uh, a game of Rising Tide with him. I did. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had, oh, well, this was sent six days ago. So this was right after the episode. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I totally forgot to talk about in the games I played that I played Rising Tide while setting up Root, and I was functionally non-existent from the game uh, to the point where on our way home, Megan didn't talk about Root. She didn't talk about War Words. She talked about how much it sucked playing Rising Tide with me because I was setting up Root, and so I was only engaged on my turns and not paying attention at all to what they were doing, which is fair. Uh, I should not have accepted playing that game is, is really what that comes down to. Or there were other people that could have set up Root, and then you could have just played that game. Well, when we first started, we were the only three there. Mm-hmm. 
But yes, as other people arrived, I could have handed off root setup and then focused on the game. Yeah. But or just not have played root. I think that probably was the mm, winning no, decision. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, as to the the main subject of the email, Mr. Stan Kroenke. Um, so he also owns, I believe, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He owns, so in here in Denver, he owns the Nuggets and the Avalanche. Mm-hmm. I believe he also owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. There are rules against owning two NFL teams. Uh, it's basically are they in the different leagues? Or... Um, like the American versus National or whatever. No, he only owns. Well, Jaguars. I don't know that. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, I see. The Nuggets saying. being NBA, the Avalanche no. being NFL. No, I know that. Yeah, NHL. I thought you NHL. said that it was Bro- uh, yes. Broncos. So. Here in the Broncos side of things, no, the Broncos were bought by. Uh, he owns the Rams. Thank you. Yes, I knew he owned one of the other. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Because I remember everybody being outraged in St. Louis when they were moving the Rams back to L.A., which is. There's a whole ball and whole bunch of story shit there too. Uh no, so the the Broncos were bought officially by a Walton who only happens to be married to Stan Kroenke's sister. I see. So it is still just one big club and none of us are fucking in it. Mm-hmm. Um and then yeah, apparently he owns fucking Arsenal too. So mm, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Look it must be nice to be you go go stupid, stupid, stupidly rich. Look, uh Adrian, go marry him instead of Megan and then you'll you'll be a part of that. <laughs> I don't know if he is into that, but I would be for that amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is listener feedback from the hater. Uh I watched a funny TikTok the other day about The Last of Us, and it was the first three episodes of The Last of Us. It was something along the lines of the first two episodes. It was like rednecks. It's like, woo, oh, fuck yes. the government and guns. Woo, shooting. And then the second episode, same thing. Fuck the government and guns. Woo. And the third episode was like, boys ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one that was basically like, it was just the third episode. And it was, it was them like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's right. Fuck the government. Yeah. His new world Ron order Swanson fascist. Is, yeah. Ron Swanson's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, hunting and yeah, cooking uh, good dinners. Like, oh, oh He's okay. getting real close. <laughs> he's, and then, and then, yeah, he's, he's getting real close. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, great times, great yeah. times. Good show. It's, a, sh- show. it's a shame that... Uh, the same people that uh, review bombed that third episode are also the people that <laughs> <laughs> just... just, just no, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, you're on that team. Yeah. I am not on that team. All you have to do is like Abby, and then yeah. you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I signed up for IMDb just to rate that episode of 10 because that episode is so good. I'm just, it was you making know what? me mad that it was the lowest rated episode of the show so far. You know what? So you know what's just going to happen now is I'm going to cut that. I signed up on the, but just to rate it, the lowest episode. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I keep the raw files here so oh, yeah. that I can redeem myself. Oh, if you're, you're going to edit it? No. Yeah. <laughs> but I keep, like, I. I know. I know. But then are you going to release it? Are you going to do anything when I do that? Only if someone calls <laughs> me out on it, because otherwise I won't know that you've done it. <laughs> I don't listen to these episodes. Uh, um, shit. There's something else I was going to say, but I lost it. Yeah. So. That's it for listener feedback and the episode. If you want to get a hold of us, you can send us emails. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. If you're ever concerned when you haven't heard from us in a few weeks, you can tweet us at MHGameGuys. I'm Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. All over on the Twitter. That still is existing. Shocking. Sometimes. Mostly. Um, we have our Board Game Geek Guild, guild number 2731. Yes. I am shocked I remember that number. Um... I've said it a lot over the last five years. So on Instagram, MH Game at Guys. MH Game Guys. There's Denver Game Night on Facebook if you want to just look at our fucking weekly game nights. Yep. DenverGameNight.com <laughs> if you want to see our schedule yeah. for game night as look well. At all the, look at all the fun we're having if every you, week. If you ever, Sometimes twice a week. If you're ever in Denver like Taylor was last week, yeah. you know, you can come check out a game night and play some games with us. It's good fun. Did she come? Yeah, she oh. came. Well, she came not this past Wednesday. Uh, the Denver Wednesday Beer Co. She was at Denver oh, Beer Co. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't go to that one. Gross, Boyd. Uh, but that's it for this episode. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm no superb owl, Jeff. Mm, boy. Bye. Bye. Bye.